I welcome you today to our midweek service. We thank God that uh, it is yet another time that we listen unto his word, because it is the word of God that nourishes us and uh, keeps us moving on. So I welcome you all. My name is Benson Macharia. Let us pray for the word. Everlasting Father, we are before thy presence. We want to thank you for giving us yet another opportunity to interact with your word, to interact with your mind, O God. And how we pray that Jehovah, King of all our glory, that your word will have an impact in our lives. Thank you for everyone that will listen and view this sermon. We pray that Jehovah Lord, it will be for the benefit of our spiritual lives. For it is in Jesus' name we do pray, trust, and give thanks. Yeah, we thank God for yet another time that we are here to listen his word, that the word of God is leaching us wherever we are, at our workplaces, at our homes, or wherever we are. We thank God that uh, he has uh, made this time uh, fit for us to listen from him. Our leading today comes from the book of Second Corinthians, chapter 12, verse 7 to 10. Our lead, Second Corinthians, chapter 12, verse 7 to 10, the Bible says, to keep me from becoming conceited because of these surpassingly great liberations, there was given me a thorn in my flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me. Three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me, but he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast. Uh, all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may last on me. Verse 10 and the last. That is why for Christ's uh, sake I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Uh, our topic for today is hope in God. Hope in God is our topic for today. Paul, who was a, a great servant and apostle, who served God and he worked tirelessly for God. In fact, the Bible says that when he was converted, he used the same or equal measure of uh, strength to preach the gospel as he used to persecute the church. But sometimes in the midst of his service, he felt so down. He felt as if he wouldn't be able to move on because a messenger of Satan was sent to him as a thorn in his flesh that was uh, supposed to torment him. He continued praying unto the Lord continued praying, and the Bible says that he prayed for three times. But the answer that our God gave to him is, my grace will be sufficient. And so this gave him hope to continue. This gave him hope to move on and to continue trusting in the Lord. I want to mention a few things uh, before I conclude. And uh, my opening remarks will be, there is a statement that I've written here. Even when you feel down, there is no cause for alarm because there is hope in a God of a second chance. When you feel you are so down, when you feel like you cannot move on, I want to encourage you today that there is no cause of alarm. Yes, you are feeling down. Yes, you are feeling as if you cannot move on. There is no cause of alarm because there is a God. There is hope in a God who gives a second chance. Our hope should be fixed in the Lord. Our eyes should be fixed on our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us put our hope in God because he is a God of another chance and when we put our hope in him, he will definitely uplift us. When you read the book of Proverbs 11 and verse 7, it tells us that we should not place our hope in anything else. Actually, it talks of the motto. We cannot place our hope in the motto. 
Because when the motor dies, our hope will die with the motor. So let us put our hope in the immortal God who changes not and who will continue uplifting us. Because when we put in the motor, uh, when the motor dies, the power of our hope will die together with it. We also should not put our hope in our riches. Though riches increase, you should not set your heart on them. As the Bible says in the book of Psalm 62 and verse 10, we should not put our hope in our material things. For riches increase, and my prayer is that the Lord may continue making us leech and leech and leech. But even when we become leech, let us not put our hope in all these material things and uh, all these that the Lord has given us. There are good examples of people who put their hope in the Lord and they were uplifted by God. Number one is Abraham. He hoped on the Lord even when he was so old and he felt like he cannot get a child. He put his hope in God. There is Joseph in Egypt. He has been sold uh, to the Egyptians but he put his hope in the Lord and at last he was uplifted. Look at David. In Zikrag, David felt as if he had come to an end, but he encouraged himself in the Lord. He put his hope in the Lord. Remember Hezekiah in his deathbed, but he had put his hope in God, and he appealed, and God remembered him. Now as I finish, I want to mention about five things that will enable us to put our hope in God. Number one, for us to put our hope in God, we should rely on his presence. We should rely on the presence of God. Let us put our hope in the presence of God. Because when you know that the Lord is ever-present help, then you will be able, able to put your help in him. Number two, rely on God's provision. You know, the Lord provides unto us. He has been providing. He provided for us when we were in need. He will continue providing. Even now he has provided. He will continue providing. And if he has been providing, he is providing today. Why don't you hope in him that he will provide tomorrow? And number three, rely on God's power. The power of God has been at work. And this is why today we are rejoicing. Because the power of God has been at work. And if that power of God has been at work, it has worked on us. It has changed us. As Paul was changed, as we have been changed, let us continue relying on this power of God that will continue changing us. Let us put our hope in him because he will continue uplifting us. Number four, this, this is very interesting, that we should put our hope in the Lord because it is too early to give up. It is too early to give up. When you feel like you are about to give up, remember that it is too early. Just push on a little bit. Push on a little bit and the Lord will see, see you through. The Lord will show up when you just realize that it is too early. You continue trusting in him. You continue putting your hope in him. He will come for your rescue. Number five and the last. There is still work to be done. There is still work to be done by you. So don't lose hope. Put your hope in God because there is a lot to be done by you. There is a lot to be done in that calling that you received, you have not yet worked up. You have not leaked uh, the climax. So let us put our hope in the Lord and the Lord will continue uplifting us. His grace will be sufficient. As Paul said that when he prayed, the Lord replied, my grace shall be sufficient. My word for you today, put your hope in God because his grace shall be sufficient. Let us pray. Once again, our dear Lord, we are before thee. We want to thank you because you have reminded us that we should put our hope and trust in you. And our prayer is that, Jehovah Lord, because you have been our provider, because your presence has worked together with us, Lord, we pray that even now, may you continue working with us so that we may be able to put our trust in you, so that we may be able to put our hope in you. Remember those of us who are going through challenges. Father, may you approve to them. May you help us to put our hope in you so that, Lord, you may deliver us from those pits that we are in, so that you may deliver us from the challenges that we are going through. Thank you, Lord, because you have been gracious and you are going to continue being a gracious God unto us. For this is our prayer of faith. 
through Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen, amen, amen.